Hi, my name is Lex Lang. I'm a voice actor. I've been doing it for 27 years. I've played over 450 different characters. And uh, here we are. Let's talk. Can you tell us the story of how you got into the voice acting industry? Yes, the way I got into the voice acting industry is very interesting. Uh, I've always been an actor. In high school and in college, I was a stage actor. And then after college, I was with a, a repertory company in Arizona that's uh, in the United States. And um, from there, I started doing stand-up comedy. And eventually, I went to Los Angeles, California to be uh, a student at the Musicians Institute, which is a, a vocational school for guitar players and bass players and uh, a variety of other um, recording artists and things like that. And while I was there, I was uh, the spokesman for the school. So anytime anybody uh, wanted to find out more information for the school, they would send out for a packet that they would receive in the mail. And I was the spokesman uh, on the packet. And that's not, I really wasn't doing voiceover then. I was an on-camera person telling them all about the school. But um, at one point, there was a director of a film called Rich Girl that called the school and wanted someone to come and show the actors how to look like they were playing the guitar. And so they sent me down there and I was doing windmills and jumping off the stands and all that sort of thing. And um, the director said, you wouldn't happen to be an actor, would you? And I said, yes. So he put me in the film as the lead guitarist of the film. And uh, while I was there, I met a guy named Bentley Mitchum, who was uh, the grandson of a very famous actor named Robert Mitchum, who was several decades ago. He was like during the 40s and 50s and things like that. And um, he's an on-camera actor. And we became really good friends. We became roommates at one point. And he was doing a film in Vancouver, Canada with a, a girl named Amy Jo Johnson, who was the pink Power Ranger at the time. And so we all went out to dinner, we were hanging out, having fun, and I started doing my stand-up comedy routine that had a bunch of different voices in it. And she said, you'd be a great voice actor. And I really didn't know anything about what voice acting was. I couldn't even think of an animation or anything that had a lot of voice acting because this was 27 years ago. It was before The Simpsons, really. The only cartoons that were out were like Tom and Jerry and Bugs Bunny. Mel Blanc was doing that already. So there was like, I was like, what? what? What cartoons? What, what do you mean? Well, she showed me that on the show The Power Rangers, they often used a voice actor to play the voice of the different monsters and big robots and things like that on the show, the villains on the show. So she introduced me to the producer of The Power Rangers, and I did some voices for him, and he said, you're hired. And that's when I started, is on The Power Rangers. Do you have a favorite fan interaction? Do I have any favorite fan interactions with my time in the industry? Um, this might sound a little cliche, but pretty much every fan interaction that I have is a good one. I love to see how the shows or the games or the properties that I've done voices on have made a difference in their lives. A lot of times someone says it got them through a very difficult time, or, it's, or maybe they had an illness or one of their relatives had an illness and they were able to watch the show together, like they binge watched a show together to get through a difficult time. And that means a lot to me when you know I'm part of a show like that that helps somebody. And uh, sometimes the shows I'm in make people believe in themselves a little more. And so that's always really cool too. What's your favorite memory from your work? One of my favorite memories from the work I've done is um, I had the privilege to play Batman on a show called Batman Brave and the Bold. Uh, the main Batman was a guy named Diedrich Bader, but there was a story arc called Knights of Tomorrow, where Robin is given the cape and cowl from, Bat uh, from Batman because Batman had gotten older. And he's, he was given the cape and cowl so he could become Batman and fight Joker and Joker's grandson. And there's a scene where Joker says, uh, uh, it would take an army to defeat me. And my Batman says, well, that army is me. And Joker's grandson says, and who are you? And I got to say, I'm Batman. The funny part about that story is that when I initially got the script, I was reading it and it, it was like, I'm Batman. You know, I got to walk around my house and I was constantly going, I'm Batman, I'm Batman. And I had like this real deep voice and I was really practicing it over and over, driving my wife crazy. And um, when we got to the session, I, we got to that part in the rehearsal and the director said, everything's sounding great. I just need it to be higher pitched because it's Robin who's become Batman. And so I was like, I'm Batman. And she's like, a little higher. I'm like, I'm Batman. And she's like, a little bit higher. I'm like, I'm Batman. And she's like, can you go any higher than that? 
And I was like, I'm Batman? You know, like I, I was like not even sure how to do it. And she goes, yeah, right around that pitch. So just go like, I'm Batman, you know, like right in that zone. So that was funny. We were all kind of laughing then because I'd practiced so often with this low pitch voice. But when we did the recording, when I got to that point and I said, I'm Batman, they stopped the recording. All the producers and the director got up and they applauded and they, they you know, there's a little talk back switch where they talk from the booth over to the actors that are in the recording side. And the director said, I just want to let you know, you're one of the eight people in the world that has ever said the words, I'm Batman at the Warner Brothers recording studios as part of an animated series. And so I literally, began to cry, like out of happiness, you know, I wasn't sad about it. I was, I was my eyes teared up and I was like, oh, I'm Batman, you know, I was, I was literally like tearing up so hard and it always stuck with me as like, what a privilege, you know, cause Batman is massive. All the films, all the different series, you know, Kevin Conroy was really the epitome of Batman. He played Batman for 20 years. He was a voice actor that played Batman. He passed away recently. Um, but just to be like one thread in the tapestry that is Batman, to me that is like one of the greatest privileges that you could ever have as a voice actor. And to boot, my brother, uh, he passed away too, not too long ago, uh, was a huge Batman fan. And when he saw that I had been cast as, as Batman in that and another show, a couple other shows, it made him so, he like swelled with joy. He was so happy, you know, so prideful that his brother had voiced a character that he'd been just idolizing for his entire life, you know? So that was another thing that made, filled my heart as well, that I could like bring my brother such happiness with, with being able to play a part that I too was a fan of. Who is the most surprisingly nice person you work with? Someone you heard was a bit of a diva, but ended up being the complete opposite. Who was the kind person I got to work with? Um, let's see, Brooke Shields I worked with on one of the, I think it was Justice League Unlimited. I worked with her, she was pregnant at the time and someone had mentioned that she was kind of crabby or something and, and I just remembered that she was really sweet. And then I was also, on another occasion, I was directing a live action film with uh, Norm MacDonald in it. It was actually a CGI film called The Ladybug. It's not Miraculous Ladybug, but it's called The Ladybug. It's on Netflix. And I got to work with Norm MacDonald. He's a comedian. Uh, and he was the most down to earth, sweetest person you could ever imagine. He was just like so nice. What's your favorite memory from your work? What role was I most excited? Well, that's pretty much hands down uh, when I was cast as Han Solo for uh, a bunch of the video games that came out. Um, you know, when I was in my teens in high school, I used to go to, back then we didn't have anime cons or comic cons. It was just either like a sci-fi convention or an anime convention. They were all segregated still. Now they're all just one pop culture convention. But I, I went to a, they were called Star Trek conventions back then. But Star Wars had come out a few years earlier and I used to cosplay as Han Solo. So when I got the audition for Han Solo, Already that was enough. I was like, oh my God, I'm auditioning for Han Solo. This is fantastic. And they were auditioning in four different cities in the United States. They had, I think it was 400 uh, auditions per city. So it was 1600 auditions that they sifted through and it kept getting boiled down, boiled down till it was 16 of us. And after it was 16 of us, then it came down to four and then two of us. And then, you know, I auditioned. When, we, when it came down to two of us, they sent us just the audio of Harrison Ford doing from a, from a New Hope, doing Han Solo, like all the stuff that was just like him, without effects, without music, without anything, just like his dialogue right off the microphone. And so we got to study that a little while. And then when they called me, my agent pretended like I didn't get the part. She was kind of going, "Well, you know, it it came back. We found out who got Han Solo, and I'm I just." I had to call you personally because I wanted to tell you, and I was thinking, oh no, I didn't get it, you know, and she goes, you got the part. And I was like, I, I tried to play it cool. I was like, oh, that's really great. I'm really excited for that. Thank you so much. Oh wow, I can't wait. That's really cool. And I hung up and then I really, I ran around the room like a schoolgirl, basically like, oh my God, oh my God, I got the part of that solo, oh my God. I was, I was literally, I was on cloud nine for probably 
a week. I just, it was the greatest thing I could have ever asked for. I was just so psyched. Which your dream role and why? Well, uh, I've answered this in other interviews and, um, you know, I feel really blessed because I get a chance to audition for so many great parts, but I really think it would be cool if there was an animated series that was really, the way that like Batman has his own series, if there was an animated series about Superman, and if I could play Superman, you know, both as Clark Kent and as Superman. And the reason being is because I think it, it would make a great animated series, you know, especially like a modern animated series, to be able to like dive into the character, both like his mild-mannered self, and then the Superman her heroic side of his character too. How did you prepare for your most challenging role and what did you learn from it? How did I prepare for my most challenging role and what did I learn from it? Um, well, there's two kinds of challenging roles. There's one that is challenging as an actor to find the different levels of nuances that you know your acting skills are required for. And then there's another one that is like vocally challenging. And um, one of the most challenging, vocally challenging roles was I was on a video game called Evolve. And I played a character who was kind of a Norseman, half Norseman, half machine named Torvald. And when I got to the uh, session, they said, you've got like 2,800 lines, but 1,600 of them are yelling. And we want you to do three takes of each line. So I had four sessions of four or five hours, I think it was. was. Uh, but they said, okay, on the first line, we want you to shout like you're, you're calling out over machine gun fire. And the second time you do it, we want you to call out like you're on, shouting out over machine gun fire, but you're at the bottom of a ravine and you're yelling up to somebody at the top of a ravine. And the third one, we want you to shout like there's explosions happening, machine gun fire, an aircraft over you, and you have to shout out over all that. So that was the most challenging. What I learned from it <laughs> is that you're not supposed to scream for four hours solid because every single time, every single session out of the four or five sessions I did, my voice was ruined for days. Like, like I really, I had to like be quiet in order not to completely damage my voice. And so since then they've put rules into place where a voice actor can't yell for more than two hours so yeah and then as far as uh, the other like the nuanced uh voice acting roles um that might be han solo also because um i did a couple of games where he had a lot of lines and with han solo my natural speaking voice doesn't really sound like han solo so i have to put on you know watch your mouth kid you're gonna find yourself he has a little bit of that swagger in the voice and um well, that requires like manipulating your vocal cords in a way that is like, almost like doing a curl, you know, with a weight. And you realize after you do a hundred curls that it starts to, you go to fatigue, you know, you can't lift up the weight anymore. And it's the same thing with um, doing a sound of a specific character. And I realized that you have to take breaks when you're doing these nuanced performances with nuanced uh, things like that, yeah. If you had to restart your voice acting career today, what would be the first thing you'd do? If I had to restart my voice acting career from scratch today, um, the first thing that comes to mind is I would, I would start a lot younger. <laughs> I started, you know, I was almost 30 years old when I started doing voice acting. Had I known about it, or today, you know, if I'd been, like just when I'd gotten out of college or whatever, I would have started much earlier, for starters. I, I guess I would just do more of what I'm doing now, you know? make sure I get an agent, make sure I get a good demo tape, make sure that I'm auditioning often. Um, you know, uh, I think a part about being an actor, especially a voice actor, is we do a lot of auditioning. That's the, that's the majority of our work is auditioning. And so I would make sure to remind myself that once you do an audition, you let it go. And if it's meant to be, you'll hear from it, you know, the directors or the casting people. If you could go back to the start of your career and give yourself one piece of advice, what would that be? Maybe I answered it in the last question. But one piece of advice for myself starting out, um, start sooner. <laughs> no, uh, it's been great. Um, you know, believe in yourself. Um, take as many classes as you possibly can. Um, don't be hard on yourself. 
you know, if you feel like you you don't have something just right, just be okay with it. Be okay with learning, be okay with growing, be okay with things as they are. You know, a lot of times people want something to be different. You know, a lot of times, especially when you're starting out with any kind of career, if you don't get the part or you have an audition for a part you really want, you, 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 you're, atta you're attached to it. You have some kind of attachment to it or an expectation or a judgment on your performance. You know, let go of judgments, attachments, and expectations, and just be present to like the moment. Be in the moment when you're acting, and then just let the rest go. And the universe will support you. You know, I'm a big believer that the some people call it consciousness, some people call it God, whatever. You know, like the universe has your back. If you have good intentions and you take actions towards the right thing, the the universe will kind of. I've heard it. Someone say like, it'll conspire for your greatest good to emerge. So just keep going after what you love and the universe will back you. You know, it'll open doors for you as long as you're pursuing what you think is, is good and what you love. Uh, check out uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. I play Seguru Geto in Jujutsu Kaisen. He's one of the main antagonists. Season two is gonna be amazing. Um, if you wanna follow me on Instagram, it's Lex Lang. Same thing with TikTok, Lex Lang TikTok. And I'm, I'm on Twitter at Lex Lang, but I'm not on it very often. But uh, Instagram and TikTok, you'll find me more often. And, you know, uh, go after your dreams. I know it might sound cliche, but go get them. <laughs>